Okay, this is the second part of elementary row operations. We're going to start with the theorem. So this was actually the theorem that we stated on the last video, but we'll be using it for today's video. So I wanted to mention again, every elementary matrix is invertible and its inverse is invertible. We found all the different types of elementary matrices on the last video, and we showed that they were all invertible. So this theorem says every invertible matrix can be written as a product of elementary matrices. So let's look at the idea of this. So let EI, where I is 1 to, to however many, be the elementary matrices needed to reduce A to the identity matrix. So E1... We multiply E1 to A, E2 to EN, and then you get I. That would mean this is our A inverse. So writing that out, take the inverse of both sides, and there you have it. A can be written as a product of elementary matrices. And we know that each of the elementary matrices are invertible, so we're allowed to do that. Let's look at an example. Remember, the effect of an elementary matrix is to perform an elementary row operation on A. So we can write out the elementary row operations in order to row reduce it to I, and we'll be able to write out our element the product of elementary matrices. Let's do it. So we have our one here. We want a negative. So we'll go minus three row one plus row two to row two. So in order to find our first elementary matrix, I take this elementary row operation and I apply it to the identity matrix. The first row stays the same. And that's my first elementary matrix. And so we do the same here. I know I'm going to get zero there. So before I get one here and create fractions, I see that these two will add to give me zero. So I'm going to choose to get zero here next. Not quite following the algorithm to a T. It's fine. But you do only want to do elementary row operations, one step at a time. Don't do multiple steps at a time. Here, it's important because we're looking for the elementary matrix. So to find E2, this is our second step. And what I usually do is I call this these directions E1. These directions are going to be my E2. And sometimes you can just see it. Um, I add row 1 to row 2 of my identity matrix. So you're taking your identity matrix and applying that operation, and we get 1, 1, 0, 1. Now we're reducing this like normal. It's pretty much we're finding the inverse. And our last step, again, maybe you can see this using that operation on the identity matrix. Again, this is my E3, this row operation turns to this matrix, elementary matrix, and this becomes, so it's supposed to be a three there. So we can see here our A inverse is, so now, just to recall, we have A, we have our first row operation, our second row operation, it took us three of them. We have one, two, three. Turn it to I. There's three steps. Turn this to I. So we can see here A inverse equals E3, E2, E1. And I forgot to write the question. The question is actually write A as a product of elementary matrices. And so what we have here is the inverse is written as a product of elementary matrices, which isn't our question. We want A, 
to be. So all we have to do, I'll copy this again so we don't lose it, is take the inverse of both sides. A inverse inverse is A, and then we get, remember this is backwards. This one goes first. So before we can write them as a product of elementary matrices, we've got to find the inverses of each of these. E1 inverse, 1, 0. This is the additive, and we want 0. It has to add to be 0. So we want 3 there. So make sure if you're not positive of what the inverse is, you check it. This times this is minus 3 plus 3. We will get a 0 in our spot when we multiply those two. Everything else checks out. That'll be 1 in the corner. Top, top is 1. That's multiplying these two to make sure you get the identity matrix. Let's do this again. This again is the additive inverse in order to get zero there when we multiply. So this and this should get one times one is negative one plus one is zero. We'll get, get us a zero there when we multiply those two. So that works. This last one, we need this to multiply to get a positive one there. So it has to be negative two. It's the multiplicative inverse. This times that, it's positive one in that spot. So again, just a quick review of the inverses. We need these two to multiply to give you i. This is, we want zero to be in this spot. So it needs to be adding to be zero. Same with this one was adding. So this and this need to be zero. And this is in the spot where we want it to be one. So when you multiply, you need to be positive one. So checking it. Let's multiply these together. Let's first multiply these two. So that's the last and the last minus three plus one. Copy this. Again, this is E1. That's the product of those two. And lastly, again, you should really check this. So you get practice multiplying two by twos pretty quickly. This times this, zero times plus positive. Minus two minus two is four. And I remember that was my silly A that I chose. So it works out, yep. So we're going to write down a theorem that so far is the most important theorem that we've seen. So basically, if you have one of these statements, it doesn't matter which one, you have all of these statements is true. So if one is true, all of them are true. So if A is invertible, that means if you have the equation AX equals zero, then only X equals zero is a solution. It only has the trivial solution. The, that also means the reduced row echelon form of A when you reduce it is I. And it also means A can be written as a product of elementary matrices. So we're gonna prove this. And the way to prove that they're all equivalent, pretty straightforward. So yeah, so we're gonna show that if one, then we have two. If we have two, then we have three. If we have three, then we have four. And you have to go full circle. If you have four, then you have one. So that makes it a full circle. And it feels like it's not proving they're all equal, but you are. For example, if I had two and I needed to prove that it's one, I mean, instead of going backwards, well, you'd prove this and then this and then this be a longer proof, but it works. So starting with one implies two. So we're given A is invertible. So what we know is so A inverse exists. That's what that means. And we want to prove AX equals zero has only one unique solution, the trivial solution. And since we know A inverse exists, we're going to left multiply, but remember you have to left multiply 
both sides by the inverse that we know exists. We can only do that if we know it exists. Well, now we know, since it exists, this is i. Yeah, and the instructions are left multiply by a inverse. When you multiply a matrix times 0, this is the 0 um, matrix vector, we get 0. It was one of our identities before. So basically, x equals 0. We have shown, therefore, x equals 0 is the only solution. 2 implies 3, so we're given 2, the one that we just proved. x equals 0 is only solution. So let's write this in augmented form. Well, when you row reduce this form, that always stays zero. We know that. When we get the solution is zero, that means this has to row reduce to i. We can write it out in equations so you can see it better. But this is true. That has to be um, zero since x is the solution given and it has to be i there because each individual one has to be zero in order for it to be zero there so therefore i is okay so now three implies four so given that means we can take a and apply elementary matrices to it, which is just row reducing it, and we should get i. Again, these are row operations, which we convert to elementary matrices. Well, clearly here, what are we trying to prove? a can be written as a product of elementary matrices. This is a inverse. We've already seen this argument. So A, we know each of those elementary matrices, the inverse is an elementary matrix, so therefore we've proved it. Therefore, A can be written last. So let's write that out. And again, we're trying to prove one, which is A is invertible. Remember the first theorem we wrote today? Each elementary matrix has an inverse. Each one of them exists. So therefore, it doesn't matter which way we go on this one because we have to do it twice. This exists, so we're allowed to left multiply it. We'll group those. That's I. Now we're left with E2 to En. Now we'll do this again with E2 inverse. We'll wrap that. That'll be I and so forth and so forth until we go all the way to the end. We're left with I. And so now we can see this is A inverse. We'd have to do it again. Um, again, this was left multiplying. We'd have to do it again by right multiplying each one of those so that those are reversed. So therefore, it's the same steps. A is invertible. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching.